Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to learn the vision models and also the diffusion models that we are going to analyze the images in each single tweet. Uh, so first, let's look at the data that we are going to use. So uh, as I said, we have collected uh, several tweets. Uh, so for today's uh, tutorial, I'm going to use part of the tweets that uh, we collected uh, because we are analyzing the images, so it will normally uh, cost more credits uh, of either using the large language models credits or the uh, computation powers. Uh, so uh, I randomly selected about uh, 500 tweets and also not all the tweets that contain images. Uh, so if a tweet that contain image, so normally that information is stored in the tweet entities. Uh, where it has a URL key, and this contains the URL of that image. So specifically, you can see here we have an image where it has two URLs. So the first URL that uh, refers to the image that the original image. So you can see the, the size of that image. And the second URL is like the, the reduced the resized small image that is 150 by 150. So uh, Twitter organized all the images that resize to the same size, that is 150 and 150. So that is the second object. Um, the first object or the first URL is always the original image. Uh, so if you check the other uh, tweets, and you can see that if a tweet that contains uh, a image, so it is stored as a URL in this entities.urls.images. All right, so that's the data that we can use. Uh, so if you are interested in collecting data, uh, collecting tweet, uh, so you can check my um, previous tutorials. Uh, the model that we're going to use. So um, uh, we're going to use uh, two different types of the large language models or the foundation models. Uh, one is called the vision language model. So this is a foundation model that can integrate um, visual and also text information. So in so when they train the models, uh, they combine the images and also the text into the input, uh, so that the models is able to understand the images and also text message. So when we are using this model, so we can let's say um, provide an image to this model. And we can ask the model that, OK, so tell me that what uh, entities are on this image. Or you can like see a uh, summarize that describes what this image are showing about. So that's the first type of the model. Um, the second type of model are called diffusion models, so which are also very popular nowadays, that uh, the models are uh, is they are able to create a different type of the images based on a text prompt. Um, some models can also use to money uh, to edit the existing image. So for example, you can either just write a simple prompt and the model will generate image for you, or you can upload an existing image. The model can uh, create variant images based on the uploaded ones. Uh, you can also provide a text message that you can uh, specify the model that how to monitor or how to edit your uploaded images. So that's called diffusion models. Uh, if you're using um, this notebook uh, on AWS SageMaker, uh, so I would recommend use the Condor PyTorch kernel. So you can see that I'm using the Condor PyTorch kernel, which is optimized for, for PyTorch so that we have uh, enough uh, computation powers to process images. Uh, so as always, uh, so we need to set up those uh, credentials uh, in the uh, safe place. So for example, I'm using AWS Secrets Manager. So uh, if I use MongoDB, uh, you need to start the connection strings in the uh, AWS Secrets Manager. And also we are using OpenAI's uh, vision models and also image models. Uh, so you need to have an OpenAI API key and save that one in the AWS Secrets Manager. Uh, to start, we need to pip install those two Python libraries. Uh, one is pure Mongo, so that we can manage the MongoDB database. Uh, we also need to install the OpenAI uh, Python library, 
so that we can call the vision models and also the diffusion models. And then we are going to uh, define this uh, secret uh, manage function so that we can retrieve our uh, credentials. Um, and then we are going to import those Python libraries and also we are going to get our open API key and also our MongoDB uh, connection uh, secret, uh, connection stream. Uh, next, uh, we are going to connect to our uh, database. As I said, I'm using the tweet sample collection because I don't want to process a thousand of tweets because uh, uh, process images will take more uh, uh, either AWS credits or the OpenAI credits. So I'm going to just uh, analyze part of my uh, tweets. Um, so now I'm going to extract the tweets that contain uh, images, so image URLs to be more specific. So again, not all tweets contain images. So for example, among those 500 tweets, uh, so I'm going to extract tweets that has a valid uh, image URL. So that's this part of code. And also I just want to extract tweet ID and also that URL. And then I'm going to install those extracted information into this uh, um, uh, list uh, because I don't want to retrieve the, the MongoDB database uh, multiple times. And also I'm using the second URL of that image uh, entity. So if you remember that that is the second URL, which can retains uh, the, the small image. So it's always 150 by 150, so it, we are using the the smaller size of the image, so not the original image. Okay, uh, so let's see how many uh, image URLs that we have. Uh, so you can see we have uh, 32 images, so 32 URLs linked to those images that sent out uh, from those uh, 500 tweets. Uh, we also need to define some uh, utility functions. So our first function is called get image from URL uh, because all the images are uh, from an URL. So uh, the Twitter stores the URL of that image. So we need to retrieve the image through that URL. And also uh, the, the foundation models, they also generate images uh, and also they provide you the URL of that image. So you also need this uh, function to retrieve the image uh, through those URLs. Our second uh, function, function is called uh, display image. So when we receive the image, if we want to show that image, we need to display that one in Python. So we are using the matplotlib. Um, our second, our third uh, utility function uh, is called image to bits uh, because that is required by OpenAI. So when we pass image to OpenAI, we need to convert the image into this uh, byte format. So when we have image, we are going to convert that one to the re, uh, preferred uh, formats by OpenAI. And also remember that the format is PNG format. OK, uh, so now we are going to do our first task. That is that when we have those images and we want to use a, a, a vision model or vision to language model to process image, so specifically, uh, we are using GPT-4 or Mini. So many OpenAI models that they can handle both images and text. So for some of the the uh, GPT-4 or uh, GPT-4 Mini, etc. So they can uh, take images and those text prompts. Uh, so we are using uh, for all Mini, and here you can see we define this function is that so for each single image. Uh, we want the, the large language model to analyze what are the images included and also generate a very brief description of that image and also extract those entities from image like person, uh, place, etc. And we also want to organize those uh, uh, information into a JSON document so that uh, place a description in the image uh, descript key and also list the entity types and also entity names or values in this image entities key. So that is our uh, function by using the uh, OpenAI um, 
GPT-40 mini. So now we are going to pass each single uh, uh, tweet image URL to this uh, function. Uh, so you can see that we have 32 uh, tweets that contain images. So now we are processing those images uh, by using this uh, OpenAI uh, vision to language model. All right, uh, so you can see that it takes uh, took about less than two minutes uh, to process those 32 uh, images. Uh, and also keep in mind that because we collected tweets several weeks ago, so some tweets might be deleted. Um, so in that case, the images will also not be accessible. So, so, so now we have 32 tweets that contain that URLs. However, some of those URLs may not be accessible. So we may not actually process uh, 32 uh, images. Uh, so next, we can visualize those extracted items in MongoDB. So I think the best way is that, so if you want to look at the extracted entities, like entity types or the entity values, and also see that the relationship between those entity types and those entity values, uh, the best way is to use a MongoDB charts to create different uh, visualizations. Um, if you want to see that how to learn how to create those visualizations, uh, you can check my previous tutorials. Uh, so here I'm going to show you a, a chart that I created before. So uh, let me refresh this one so that we're going to see the, the latest data. So uh, you can see that those are different types. Uh, you can see that uh, among those uh, 32 images, so we have, like, say, 17 persons, seven events, and also five different signs. Um, by the way, those tweets were collectively talking about uh, election, so before the 2024 uh, USA election. So those are the uh, different types. And those are the values. Uh, we can see uh, we have the person names and also some uh, objects, like mug, uh, workplace, uh, Etc. Uh, if you want to look at what, how are they related? So you can see uh, we have seven person that are unknown. Uh, we have one person that is one candidate. Uh, we have another person that is another candidate. Um, this is a sign that you can see the word on that sign, uh, and also it's a show. So okay. Uh, and also, uh, this events. So that's talking about the presidential campaign. Okay, uh, that's also an, a flag, which is an American flag. Okay, so you can see those are the uh, extract entities from those images. And of course, you can do the search to to find out the exact uh, image by using the search based on those uh, entity names or entity values. All right. Uh, we can also view those images and also descriptions. So here we're going to print those image descriptions. We're also going to display the images by using their uh, URL. Uh, so here we are going to we are using a random uh, function because we have 32 images. We don't want to see all of them. So we are going to randomly select one. Okay, uh, so that's one image, and you can see the, the description, so that a man pointing while standing on the stage. Uh, they also can able to extract those words that are on those uh, images. And that's also another one. So, Seeker said, I voted with American flag design. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is one that I really want to show you. So you can see that how accurate that the image description can be. So this is not a photo. This is a chart, actually. And also, and that is written in uh, Japanese, I guess. Uh, so you can see that the description is very, very accurate. That says the image is a graph showing the trend of spot rate over time. So they can all even uh, translate the language into English. Uh, with two lines indicating levels of support and non-support. And uh, the x-axis represent time from 2023 
to 2024. So that's very, very accurate, where the y-axis indicates the support levels. So I think uh, the, the version to language model did a great job. So even like for like charts that contains rich information, so they are able to uh, provide a very accurate uh, description about those charts. Okay, uh, so this is another example that apparently uh, this lady is counting the votes, I guess. So wearing a gloves in handling a box with voting equipment in the workplace, uh, filled with cardboard boxes and computers in the background. Okay, so that's also very accurate. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to create new images. So uh, for the image generation, we are using the diffusion models. So right now on OpenAI, so they have two diffusion models. One is DALI 2 and also one is DALI 3. So um, both models can generate images. Uh, however, DALI 3 can produce high re resolution uh, and also more uh, realistic, vivid or natural images. Um, and also it also has more security approaches so that uh, if you are trying to create some images that is not appropriate, uh, you will get an error. Uh, DALI 2 is a, a, a little bit old model. Uh, however, it, this is the only model that right now that, that can create variations or edit images. So if you want to create variations of an existing image or edit images like uh, just design edit part of that image, uh, you can only use DALI 2 right now. Okay, so in our... Uh, Tutorial. We are going to use DALI 2 uh, for demo. So, so here you can see. First, we are going to create image based based on the provided image description. So, uh, so this is a function. So you can see that we are using DALI 2. Uh, for this model, you can try using DALI 3. Um, you can also define the size of the image. Uh, for DALI 3, you can have high resolutions. Okay. And the image that we're going to create will be based on the Twitter description. So uh, the description is here. So you can see the uh, woman wearing uh, gloves in handling a box with voting uh, equipment. So so let's say we can we create image based on that description only. Uh, so we pass that uh, prompt to this create new image function. We receive this in new image. That is an URL, and then we're going to show in that uh, uh, image. So you can see that is, I would say it's very, very accurate, just based on the prompt that we provided. OK, so that is creating a new image. Uh, of course, uh, feel free to write your own prompt uh, if you like. Uh, uh, so for example, uh, you can also provide your own prompt. Uh, so for example, like uh, a dog eating apples. OK, so and that can also create a, a new, new image that based on this prompt. OK, so you can see it's, uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. All right, um, so that's create a new image. Uh, so Uh, let me go back. Uh, so let's just create a new one. So let's. Uh, so here we are going to. We are feeding uh, this prompt again. So a woman wearing a glove, uh, handling the boxes with voting equipment. So again we feed that one. So now you can see. Uh, so providing the same prompt, but they can generate different images. So uh, like by using the same prompt, they can create the different images. Uh, create a variant. So this is another uh, way to generate images. So the idea is that uh, you're going to provide an old image, uh, but you don't need to provide any prompt. So just provide an old image, and then uh, the the model will generate a new image based on the image that you provided. So you're not going to provide prompt, but instead you're just providing an image. And in our example, so we're going to provide uh, the image that is from the tweets. So we're going to upload this image. 
and to the uh, to the uh, to the image models, diffusion models, and also remember that for this type of the uh, task, you can only use daily two. You cannot use daily three. Okay, so we pass that old image that is on tweet, and we're going to generate a new image, and let's see how it look like. Uh, of course, you can also provide the the other uh, images, so you can see this. Uh, a different version. So uh, if we compare the one that we uploaded, that looks like this. And that is uh, the version that generated differently. Uh, if we're interested, you can just retry and uh, the, vision, the, the diffusion model will create all type of different images uh, based on the one that you provided. Okay, so you can see that is also another one. So you can tell the difference. So this is the image generated by a prompt, and this is the image generated by the one that you uploaded. Okay. Um, next, so we can edit image. So edit image means that so uh, you can provide an old image, and then you will provide a prompt, and finally you will provide a mask. So you tell. Uh, the, the AI that which part of that image you are going to modify and that is defined by the mask and then how do you want to modify that image that is uh, that instruction is provided by the prompt okay so so that is the old image and that is define the region that you want to modify that image and that is the prompt that you want to, to uh, how you want to modify that image okay um, so now how to define the mask? So you can manually create a mask um, by using the photo, photo editors like uh, Photoshop, uh, etc. Oh, there are also some online tools that you can create. Uh, in our case, we are going to use PyTorch to create segmentations on the images. Uh, so this is a code that provided by ChatGPT. So I said uh, provide segment images and also create masks. And those are the code that are written by ChatGPT. And I tested and uh, it worked. So, uh, so this is using the, the PyTorch. And that is actually uh, the reason that uh, we're using a kind of PyTorch kernel. So because we want to use a, a kernel that is optimized for PyTorch. Uh, so so if you're interested, and you can check this code. So basically, uh, they are using a model called um, uh, Deep Lab V2. Uh, so we're going to use this model to predict the segments on that image. And once we have that predicted segments, and we are going to convert that segments into a mask, uh, where we need to create a transparent uh, mask. And uh, finally, when we, when we have that mask being created, so we're going to display that original image and also the segmentations. So in this case, you can see we are able to identify that person in this image and also all the other parts that are not right will be the regions that we will ask model to modify. Okay, so that is a mask. Um, you can try with different uh, images from the tweets, and the segmentation may not be perfect uh, because of several reasons. For example, the number one is that we're using the small size of image, which has low resolutions, so the segmentation may not be that perfect. Um, this is a very, very great uh, segmentation results. Uh, however, uh, if you try the other images, so they may not have that bad uh, performance and number two if you really want a great segmentation uh, you can also use other foundation models like matters SAM uh, that is segment anything model so that also is another foundation model so to make segmentations all right so now we have the mask uh, so we're going to try this uh, uh, model so that we're going to provide our old image which is this one uh, we're going to provide our mask so that those are the uh, transparent part on this image. So, so we are not going to modify anything within the right region. 
and this is my prompt. So I can see I want to uh, change the, everything else that in the middle of the lake with yellow ducks. Uh, let's see how we're going to uh, how the model can generate that uh, image. Okay, uh, so that's the result. Uh, I think it's pretty uh, accurate. So now you can see this lady is in the link where we have uh, several uh, yellow ducks. Uh, so if you want to try, you can just try different uh, around different times and they are going to give you different uh, images uh, following the, the instructions uh, you provided. So the mask and also the, the prompt. Okay, so that's also another one. So that's also pretty cool. Okay, so that is uh, image generations. So um, uh, you can see you can create new images based on the prompt, which is uh, detected description by the large language models. Uh, you can create different variations of that uh, images. Uh, you can modify part of that image um, by using the models as well. Okay, all right. Uh, so lastly, and also a very important part is that, as you can see that uh, image models are very powerful tools. Uh, you can also even edit uh, videos, uh, so in a, uh, in a similar way. Uh, so that uh, brings a concerns that, so what if people are using those models doing bad stuff? For example, uh, they are going to generate like something like deep fake images and doing something that is really terrible. Uh, so first, you should not do that, of course. Um, and secondly, so many um, uh, model providers like AWS, OpenAI, so they are constantly update their security measures. So for example, uh, AWS last year in 2023, so they said they will add uh, watermarkers to all the images generated by the AWS uh, diffusion models. Uh, so which means that so if you have an image and you want to check whether or not that is AI generated, uh, if that is AI, if that is generated by Amazon Titan, so that's a diffusion model by AWS, and there's a way that you can tell by just check the watermarkers. And those watermarkers are not visible to human beings. So you can use a special tool to define that, to identify uh, the watermarkers. And also OpenAI also updated is safety features. So, for example, uh, if you want, if you write a prompt that uh, that to create inappropriate images, uh, you will get an error. So, for example, uh, if you want to create an image that like mimic like elections, etc., uh, you may get errors. Depends on what you write in that prompt. Uh, and also, uh, they also provided tools that can identify the images created by Dali three. So. So you can see that for the new models, uh, so they are updating those uh, safety uh, features.